A special type of constructor is called copy constructor. A copy constructor is a constructor whose parameter is a constant reference to another object of the same class. Why here should be constant? Because we just copy things from this object. We are not going to make any changes to it. So there are four cases that a copy constructor is called. First, we use one object as the constructor parameter, basically as the parameter of the constructor to initialize a new object. And second, we use equal to another object to initialize a new object. And third, we use equal to an, a temporary object returned by a function to initialize a new object. And fourth, it's call by value, not call by reference. In such cases, the copy constructor is called. And note that if no copy constructor is provided, then the compiler automatically generates a default, construct, default copy constructor, which does bit copy, bit, bitwise copying. And bitwise copying is also called shadow copying. So bitwise copying is dangerous when data members contain pointers. For example, this is one object. It has a pointer point to some memory allocated in the heap. And when we perform the bitwise copying, and this point pointer will have the same value as this pointer, which means that it points to also the same location in the heap. And this is dangerous because when we delete this object, then this piece of memory is deleted. And when this piece of memory is deleted for this object, this pointer will become a dangling pointer, which means that it, this pointer points to some memory that's not accessible. This is bad. So bitwise copying is bad. So what we want to do is to perform a logical copying. So logical copying means that when we copy, for example, this is an object, object, it has a pointer point to some memory allocated in the heap. And when we perform this copying, we also allocate some new memory in the heap and let this new pointer point to this new allocated memory. Then when we delete this object, this piece of memory is gone. It does not affect the pointer of this in this object. So it is always safe to define your own copy constructor. And if a copy constructor is not desirable for your class, then you should declare it as private and then give it an empty annotation. In that case, the copy constructor can never be called. So here's the recipe for the copy constructor. First, we need to make sure that we are not doing self-copying. Self-copying means that you copy one object to itself. So this is perform this uh, checking of not self-copying. And then second is we allocate the memory and uh, this is allocate memory and then perform the copying. And here in this example, this is the copy constructor for this base class. So here we call uh, get num function from the base, uh, this object base, from the object that we copy to, uh, copy, copy from. Note that because of this base is a constant, so we can only call constant functions which means that if this getNum function is not constant function, then this will not be able to compile. So assignment operator is called when we assign one object to another object. Note that here both objects have already been instantiated before we call the assignment operator. And if the left is 
the first time defined, then the copy constructor is called, not the assignment operator, although they look like look similar. And the difference is that copy constructor is one type of constructors, and the assignment operators are not constructors. And again, if you do not define your own assignment operator for your class, the compiler will automatically generate generate one. And if you do not want the compiler to automatically generate one assignment operator for you, then you should declare your own assignment operator, but you declare it as, it as private and then give it an empty implementation. And here is the recipe for making an assignment operator. First, you do the checking of not you are not doing self-assignment. This is the same as the copy constructor. And second is you need to de delete the memory in the heap allocated for the left object that you want to copy to you want to assign to and then after you delete the memory and then you allocate new memory and then perform the copying and in the end you want to return start this and the keyword this means the address of the current object which means the address of the current object that you copy another object to and this is useful for multiple assignments such as you assign z to y and then assign to x. And for this multiple assignment, the com compiler basically first does the assignment of z to y, and then the uh, return of this assignment, which is the address of y, and then use this return of this assignment, which is y, to uh, object X. So let's take a look of this example. So in the base class we have this uh, copy constructor and also the assignment operator. And here in the main function we define first use base define uh, base object one object instantiate the base object one object and then call the copy constructor use base object one to instantiate another object base object two and third we perform the assignment operation use object one to assign to object two and let's compile and run Okay, so let's take a look, look of this main function. First, instantiate this base class uh, object. So we have this in the base class constructor. And then we are in this uh, copy constructor. So it says in copy constructor. Here in the uh, copy constructor, we output in copy constructor. And then we perform this assignment uh, operation. And in the assignment operator, we output in assignment operator. And you can see that uh, after this in copy constructor is in assignment operator. And after executing these three lines of code, this main function returns. And when this main function returns, these two objects are out of scope. We have two objects defined as variables, these two are out of scope. Then their destructors are called. So we you, you will see this in base class destructor and in base class destructor. So actually, we have two objects, base object one and base object two. So whose destructor is called first? Actually, base object two, because we Remember that uh, we said that in in this function, the variables, all the variables are allocated in a stack that corresponds to this main function. And uh, when the compiler sees the first variable, it puts in a stack, and then sees the second variable puts it on the stack. So this one is on top of this object one. And when we get 
rid of things from the stack, the ones on the top is is uh, destructed first. So its destructor is called first, and then this destructor is called because they have the same information. So here we cannot dis distinguish them. They print out the same thing. But let's take a look of another example. If we common this off, let's take a look of this example. So here we define two direct class objects, object one and object two, very simple. In this main function, we instantiate two object variables. There, this one called the red, uh, the red object one. This is called the red object two. Now let's take a look, compile, and see the output. All right. So first, in the main function, we instantiate this object, which means that the f uh, base class uh, uh, constructor is called, and then the the red class constructor is called. That's these two lines, right? And then for this one, the base class constructor is called, then the direct class constructor is called, then that's these two for direct object two. Then the main function returns. When the main function returns, we'll see which one is called, whose destructor is called. Okay, you will see that this object, direct object two is called, the the direct class destructor is called in the base class destructor. Then for direct object one, the direct class object the destructor is called, and then the base class destructor is called. 